Good evening, everyone. Hello, I am Kung Fu Fruit Cup, and welcome to Out of Bounds. It's so nice to have you all here. Hope you all enjoyed um, the previous show of the evening. Uh, and um, let's talk about some Out of Bounds now that you're joining us. So this is a show that's all about glitches. It's basically like a glitch showcase format. Um, and tonight, I don't know why I haven't had Metroid on sooner. I've been on like a huge Metroid kick this year, and it's so great. So I'm so, so excited to not only have one of like the most popular Metroid games, which is Super Metroid, but also from Oats and Goats himself, who is here to join us. What's up, Oats? How you doing? Hello, I am great. Thanks for having me on. Yay! I know. Thank you so much for being able to join us. Let's go. I even have on kind of like the Vario suit colors tonight, even though it's just the colors of my hair. We were talking about this. Um, Anyway, I just wanted to like have the vibe. I'm just ready. I'm ready for this. I think it's going to be really fun. So uh, Oats here is going to be showing off glitches throughout the game um, and wanted to kind of like talk with you all on, you know, maybe what order you want to see bosses in. We can do that, which is really cool because this isn't just like a speed run. We get to like stop and explain glitches and like hear about how things work. Um, it's going to be really dope. So um, if this is your first time here, feel free to use the chat to ask questions as we go along. Um, I can help relay them. If, you know, Oats, if you have stuff up, you can look too. But um, yeah, we're here to like answer your questions, show off how things work, even like unintended strats. You might see some of those in here, um, but it should be a really fun experience. Um, now, I just wanted to ask before we get started, like you've been running this game for a long time. What yeah, got like you into years. it? And yeah. yeah, what got you into it? And what kind of like keeps you going with it? Um, it was just like a, a game that I loved playing growing up. So um, not only nostalgia got me back into it, but I feel like I was pretty good at the game. So when I started playing it again 11, 12 years ago now, um, I was like, oh, I wonder how fast I can beat this. Um, then I found a, I found the speedrunning community and that was like Garrison and stuff at the time. Um, a lot of old like legends. And um, I just thought I could do it just as good if not better and a part of my competitive nature just wanted to try it and um this many years later here i go um so the reason i keep playing the game is the skill cap on this um and this might not be a proper comparison but a lot of people do compare it to like let's say melee um there's sure. so many technical little nuances to where there is like an endless skill cap essentially and when i first started playing the game it was like a 4630 world record and now I currently hold the world record with a 4036. So oh. the game has improved 6 minutes in in that period of time which is which is huge for a 40 minute run. So yeah. it's just never ending. I would say that's at least 10%, like over 10% improved yeah. with something like junk. this optimized already you know much like older again like there's a lot of older well-loved games like especially in the zelda series or the mario series that you see and like a metroid is no exception of just having you know a big community of people who are like really really into it and so being able to kind of continue to optimize things in this way is like really fascinating to watch and like yeah it really does keep it going oh so, yeah, yeah that makes sense to me all right, yeah. well, I'm ready to see what you have to offer. Um, so I know we're getting started a little late here, so I'm just going to let you get into it. Thank you for, like, humoring me on some questions. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, feel free to take us through it. Um, we can ask chat, you know, whenever you want to kind of be like, hey, what are we doing first? So, chat, you're, you're gonna, you have a little bit of power. I don't know. That's kind of a dangerous game, isn't I, it? I do have the, the chat open. <laughs> so, please ask questions. Um, if you want me to go back to something and explain something, uh, please feel free. Oh, we have a um, quick question. Why does, why does Metroid turn into a ball? Oh. That's a great qu question. I'm sure we'll get to that. We huh? won't, but yeah, yeah, I'm sure we will. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start the game uh, where you would traditionally start the game. This is not going to be a traditional speed run, but right. I do want to show off some of the uh, fun stuff that you can do. As you can see, I do have a game file, and this is, mind you, this is all original hardware. Everything that I'm playing on is original like you would play on back in 94 when the game came out. Maybe not the console. It's a little bit modded, but same console. <laughs> It's just prettier nowadays. Um, but yeah, I play on a, a PVM, which is a CRT, so everything's original. Um, as you can see, I also have an extra little E-tank there, but we'll get to that eventually. Ooh, okay. Um, so yeah, I am going to start the game here um, with all of this stuff, and what do you know, we're in series station. So, um, like I said, all original hardware. Um, 
So we will get to uh, how you get back to Ceres Station with all of these items. And um, sweet. yeah, so you'll you'll notice that um, yeah, I have everything except the missiles. So one thing that happens when you do what I did is the missiles just disappear. I don't exactly know why. Um, oh, that's weird. Like after you've activated this, yeah, this gets rid of um, missiles. Okay. So we're not supposed to be here early. So let's just take a little examination. So this is what series looks like, Whoa. truly, with the X-ray scope. And what do you know? Lurking in the Whoa. shadows, we have Ridley. Wow. Um, one fun thing you can do: power bombs. They also just blow up the doors. No. Um, now I, I could leave. If I do leave. That doesn't really do anything for me. But let me show you what happens anyways. Okay. Um, so we'll leave. Everything's, you know, happening as usual. I might need to go back and have Ridley fly away for this to work, but we'll see. You can't actually escape, but um, okay. So it didn't work. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to this to see what happens once the escape sequence starts, but the timer doesn't actually start, since this is something okay. you wouldn't traditionally see. Yeah, I want to um, see this. And um, one thing with this is um, Ridley, you can't pause the game, so I can't turn my suits off. I am pretty much indestructible to Ridley. Ridley will fly away if you have 29 HP or less, or 30 or less, but this would oh. take quite a while. So what we do instead is we hit Ridley 100 times if you're going to do something like this. So it, 100 of anything will work. Okay. So basically, you just fire everything that you got to get Ridley off the screen. And uh, you almost get a glimpse of what it's like to save this baby Metroid. But uh, I'm sure you've all seen this before. Ridley right. doesn't let it happen, so. Okay, like so over half we're almost there, there yeah. Mm hmm Now, I might risk having to do this one more time to show off one silly thing. That's but fine. it Please might do. be worth it, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Um, people so, are asking about BT skip as well. Oh, okay, don't listen to that. Yeah, <laughs> don't, don't listen, listen okay? <laughs> All right, so what happens here is Ridley's gonna <laughs> fly away, but I'm going through the door. And look at this. Now we're just, oh. we're just moonwalking. Just free of charge. Yep. We can just, we don't even need to touch the controller. We can just go all the way through. Um, what? Now this is a little bit uh, scary because if I jump or anything, I will um, pretty much just soft lock myself. So okay. uh, what we can do is arm pump really, really fast. So you'll notice Arm pumping is actually a technique that you see speedrunners do. And this is one way to actually visualize what happens when you arm pump. Arm pumping is not just for fun, but it is actually a technique used from, by TAS and speedrunners to save a pixel every single arm pump. Oh my so gosh. So people always, oh. people wonder, why, why are you just moving your arm cannon up and down constantly? This is why. Um, I essentially, okay. it, it, this is the best way to visualize it. So we're going to get back here with, uh, you know, one pixel at a time. And uh, wow, now everything's a little bit different. <laughs> um, so I won't show off the one thing I was trying to show off earlier. But essentially what happens is you can't escape, but everything is, there's, there's tiles falling from the sky and... Um, if I do show it off, I have to do this again, 100 shots. And this is not too fun with just plasma. Um, I feel like I see his tail like screen wrapping almost sometimes. Yeah, hey, yep. yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is not uh, supposed to happen here. This <laughs> is definitely the game's not happy right now. So. All right, so we're going to go ahead and shoot 100 times. We're going to try to save the Metroid to no avail. And uh, we will escape this time. We will escape. No more shenanigans. And everything's back to normal. Thank goodness. Now okay. we will uh, yeah, try to be quick. Is it actually back to normal? Yes. Oh, okay, yes, cool. Okay. <laughs> you never know. There's 
quite a few different things I could show off at Series Station, but um, a lot of them are kind of volatile and will crash the game, and you kind of need to set it up beforehand. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's a whole can of worms, but uh, there's a little thing you can mess around with. X-Ray is not supposed to be used in these areas, so we, if you do use X-Ray, the timers just keep going, and um, or you can disorient. Okay. This can be sickening. You use X-Ray here because everything just keeps well, moving. Oh, that's so weird. Yeah, so it's a little bit uh, nauseating. Okay, well, so, and yeah. not centered. Right. That's so fair. that's that's um, series totally normal. That's how a series is supposed to be completed. Okay, I was gonna ask: Is there a point where you will crash the game for us? Because I would love to see one, maybe um, at the end or something. Yeah, I mean, there's I could. Cool. Yeah. So what's your favorite? If you have something that's like accessible. <laughs> sure. There's there's a couple of different ways. Um, at, at the end, I am going to show off how we got to series station with all these items. So if you're curious about that, I am going to show off how we got here. Oh, um, and before Good. that, I will show off a, uh, a silly little glitch that will happen as well. So um, in the traditional speed run, you would come over here with no items, but um, to traverse a little bit quicker, um, I will head this way. I will treat this like an actual speed run and eventually I will turn off the items um, to show you guys the tricks that we use in speed run. Perfect. And in all of that fun stuff. So real quick. Having everything is fun too. It is. It is fun. Yes. Um, so traditionally, you don't have any items um, when you come this way. You have absolutely nothing. So we're going to come here a little bit early before the planet is awake. Um, one interesting thing is this chorizo um, or the statue, this chozo, is the only thing that acts this way. Oh, so, chorizo. Uh, chozo, sorry. Um, a little, on, little fun. Chorizo, that's very funny. A little fun Easter egg is there's actually an eye camera in this one. I guess it's guarding nothing when the planet is off, but there is an actual camera in its ear. Unfortunately, we cannot see it, um, but it is there. There is a camera, um, oh. like the camera that we see on the first morph ball. Um, well, first morph ball. I, I already have a morph ball, so. Right. Yeah, we'll get we'll get the second morph ball. Interesting that there's a camera on it. So, like, what is that? What is that? Mean? I it's it's actually a camera that. Well, you know what? Let me let me show this off real quick. Um, it, it's a camera that they probably just left in there. No one was supposed to see it, um, and uh, they just forgot to take it off. So, yeah, what's the intention? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I did. Um, so one thing we do in the speed run is um, we moonfall. So you're going to see a lot of speedrunners do what I just did, fall really, really fast. And um, if you want to do it yourself, this is how it's done. So, and this was found, I don't even know, six, seven, eight years ago now. Um, it's been a long time, but this does mm -hmm. save us a significant amount of time. So the way it works is you have a moonwalk. You have to turn it on in the menu. A lot of people don't even know it's there. Um, you're going to hold an angle. You're going to start moonwalking backwards and you're going to press jump and you're going to let go of shoot and angle. It's a little bit tricky to get used to. But if you do it right, you start to fall really, really fast, Whoa, as you can see. Okay. Um, so what happens is the game has a, a cap for fall speed. But when you when you moonwalk and you do what I said when you let go of, of jump and um, angle, is it's um, the the it underflows essentially. So it, it, there is no cap. So if you had a long enough room, you'd keep falling faster and faster until the game just crashes. So, um, yeah, that is a technique that we Do you equate that, that to almost like BLJs in a way? Um, maybe. I don't know if there's a cap on, on those, but you just also, go really fast. Theoretically, yeah. also no cap on BLJs as far as I'm aware, because okay. they did not decide to set a cap on backward speed, which is why oh, they're viable. So, I yeah, suppose, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the similarity I was thinking. Yeah, probably is then. Um, yeah. So traditionally, you come over here. We'll just grab more for a second time. We already have it, but why not have two, I guess? <laughs> um, so yeah, 
because I'm going to treat this like I would an actual speeder. And of course, I have a lot more items than I would. Right. Um, yeah, so we're coming down to the first missiles, which first missiles are necessary, actually. These missiles will turn the planet on, essentially. And it, it has an event flag that um, wakes the planet up, brings the pirates. Um, that's the whole point of these cameras that shine, is they're watching you, and they see the items you collect, and they, they bring the reinforcements, essentially. So. I see. Okay, so like in Randomizer, for example, do you have to get, is it already set so the planet's on, or do you have to find missiles to like get? You have to turn the sword? planet on in, in Randomizer. Oh my gosh, so, yeah. okay. Well, you don't have to, but they're, it's, it's different. So when you turn it on, you have to play it a little bit different in Randomizers, so. Okay, that's cool, that's cool. Show us how to get Taco Tank in first try. Taco Tank is a triple frame perfect trick into a 50-50, so I don't think I have the time for that. Maybe someday. Um, so we're going to go ahead and climb up here and, uh, we will visit Bomb Tree. So even though I don't need to, I already got bombs, but. Anything cool we can see? You are so, just watching you climb the wall on the side. It is so impressive. Just I've with... played the game a long time. I know. <laughs> Unfortunately <laughs> for myself. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So up here, um, if anyone has any questions about speed earning stuff, I will try to get to a lot of the main points. Um, like you see a mock ball there, but I'll talk about that once we get to basically the points where it okay. matters. Um, cool, and I'll cool, break cool. some of that stuff down for people. Great. Yeah, I'm um, watching chat as well. Don't worry. Um, yeah, so I if, I, <laughs> if I didn't have bombs, um, I would be able to escape and finally do the bomb Teresa skip that everyone always jokes about. Unfortunately, the, the door is just going to shut because the game goes, oh, the player has bombs that triggers this door to shut. But mm -hmm. as you can see, I don't even need to collect bombs. Uh, the bomb trees will just stand up. Oh. And a funny little thing with this is, well, now he's got a little pedestal to stand on. So, <laughs> yeah, kind of kind of interesting. Just stand on the bombs themselves, uh, get he's himself stuck? stuck. Yes. So. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's very, very easy. Now, uh, we'll, we'll just grab him. Why not? Okay. Now, does he stay stuck? He will not stay stuck. He should oh, be able to move now at this point. So we'll just, uh, we'll end his suffering. Nice. We will not be seeing that dude deuce, but um, I could maybe, maybe try. That's uh, kind of a tough trick. <laughs> yeah, it's a family show, okay. Uh, okay. So we are going to head down to, uh, well, let me turn off these items. This is the point where I want to maybe have this be a little bit more traditional. Um, so at this point, we would have everything uh, off and just bombs and morph. Of course, we wouldn't have all of these items. But um, right. a lot of people ask about even tricks like this. This is kind of the first major trick that we have to do. It's called Alcatraz. And this gives people a lot of trouble. Um, so you're Alcatraz, you're just escaping kind of via the not traditional routes. You would have to go to the right and bomb all those blocks. Obviously, it's very mm -hmm. slow for a speed run. Um, so once you get wall jumping down in this game, which is very counterintuitive, um, but let's pretend that you can at least wall jump up here. A lot of people, they have a difficult time with this because they think they need to press down twice to morph, which traditionally you do one, two, but there is a interesting property to where if you wall jump and all you have to do is press down and you just auto morph. Oh. So we use that to our advantage in a lot of tricks. So once you wall jump and you're facing the same direction, you just press down. So the inputs would be, you come up here, you're gonna press left, you're gonna roll your thumb down, and then to get to the left, you're just gonna roll it back up. So it's roll it down, then back left. It's very simple. So after the wall jump, just like that. Um, people That's think cool. you need to press down twice and they have a hard time. So this is kind of one of the more uh, asked questions at the start of the speed run on how do you do Alcatraz properly? And um, it's it's a lot simpler than people realize. So speed running terms are my one of my favorite things to hear about. Like Alcatraz and like Alcatraz. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Somebody so. asked, um, what version of this did you play to close out GDQ a few years ago? Um, that was yes, yeah, Super Metroid Impossible. And also Super Metroid Kaizo. So I, I played a couple, but in 2020, AGDQ mm -hmm. 2020, I played um, Super Metroid Impossible. 
Yes, it's like a Hadouken, um, kind of. That's what I tell people, like reverse Hadouken. Cool. Yes. All right, so we're gonna head down here. And this is when we have our first mandatory mock ball of the game. So I'm going to explain kind of how that works. And um, this actually just bypasses the sports bond fight entirely. So Ooh. super nice. Uh, generally, we would only have missiles at this point in the game and one E tank. Um, so forget about all this other stuff. I cheated, you know, to get these <laughs> items, but we're going to pretend this is a normal speed run. Um, so the way mock balling works is um, one way to think about it is we have a run button. And if you get any run speed, um, you can do a mock ball. So the way I like to think about it is mock ball stands for mocking Samus's run speed. So M-O-C-K, you are just mocking Samus in her run speed in ball form. Okay. Um, so how we do that is if you look, you're going to see Samus bounce. So when you are morphing, you morph too mm -hmm. soon, Samus bounces. So if we press down and then down again right before we touch the ground, so we need to be within no like bounce. a tile, no bounce, mm -hmm. that's right. So what we need to do is once you get used to that, you can then do this trick. So one thing you can do is through this room, you hold run. What I'm gonna do is just or hold run and jump through the door. I'm just gonna let my head hit the ceiling. Once I get through the door, I'm gonna press down. So I'm gonna be aiming down. And then right before I touch the ground, I'm still, um, you don't need to still hold run here, but you can if you want. Um, I'm gonna press down and then roll my thumb immediately to the right. So the direction that I'm moving. And okay. if I do it right and I don't bounce and I get a smooth morph, I should be able to mock ball to the first super missile pack that we get in the speed run. So just like that. Um, traditionally, you're not supposed to be here and this is not supposed to be accessible. Oh. So if you want to speed run the game, this is probably other than Alcatraz, this is going to be the first thing that you, you have to learn. Um, this is kind of the mandatory thing. Unless you want to kill Spore Spawn, and that's cool too, because Spore Spawn can be entirely bypassed, even in 100%. Um, and I'll show you how we do that coming up here in just a second. So The last one, you you call it Mock Ball? What do you call it? Mock? Yes, the Mock Ball, okay. yes. Okay, cool. So sure. pretty much in the entire speed run, we're, we're using Mock Balls because it's, it's faster to uh, be in ball form in a lot of instances, if you can't be arm pumping, which arm pumping moves us forward pixels. If you can't mm -hmm. arm pump, which you can't arm pump on certain surfaces, then we okay. will try to mock ball to, uh, uh, you know, just be as fast as we can. So- Also, it seems like constant arm pumping gets gotta be tiring on your fingers. You get used to it. It's, it's, yeah, it's simple. Sure. Yeah, and it's something fun to do, so. All right, Super so- strong finger muscles. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so this is traditionally where we would exit Spore Spawn. And, you know, I, I do love Spore Spawn and all, but uh, Spore Spawn has its own category, don't worry. We're actually going to get Spore Spawn supers from the backside here without ever having to, uh, you know, torture the salad boss. So, one thing about this game is there's like camera positions. And if you're in a specific position here, so I'm looking at pixels essentially on the ground. Um, you can jump, fire a super, and hit, if you see the screen shake, hit this super block. There is a super block right here. Um, if you're trying to do this yourself, and you're trying to just do it anywhere, it won't work. You need to be in a specific position with the camera scrolled in a very specific way. So one way to do that is you can run all the way to the left. And what I like to do is, if you see that little thing on the ground, that little, little, uh, ball thing right in front of Samus's left foot. Um, if you see one dot pixel, that's too far back. So I need to push forward. Now I see it's entirely closed. There is no tiny little pixel. Then, then this will work. I would jump, shoot the super, the screen will shake. And uh, there you go. You never have to fight Spore Spawn. So let's just go ahead and grab these supers. Perfect. All right, I am getting questions. Something about gate glitch, which is up above. Can you show that off? Um, yes. Glitch? So the gate glitch, okay, cool. we will get to that. Yep. 
Okay, cool. I've also been, <laughs> I have one person asking a lot of questions. If, if it's Ryu, if we're not, not gonna. If it's Ryu, don't even respond to him. Yeah. <laughs> How did I know? How um, did I something know? about Candace skip. Yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and ban him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You don't have to yeah, ban him, poor guy. But. Several people talking about Moon Dance. Moon, moon Dance. I'm not gonna show off. It's a little bit. Uh, Tedious, and I, I, if you ever watch my stream, you know that I really dislike the trick. I, I hate moon dance. Okay, it, so um, why don't just, just tell us about it really quick. Then. Okay, so you know how there's uh, <laughs> moon fall, which I showed off at the very start. Um, one thing you can do with this as well is you can do this a ton of times, like back and forth inside of two tiles. So you kind of get yourself stuck. You then keep moon falling repeatedly, like 150 times. It breaks my fingers. I hate the trick. Okay. What that does is you start to fall so fast that you can then fall through single tile blocks. So that allows you to then get some areas early back in Green Brinstar, the, the, the shaft that we enter when we first enter the area. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I, I thought about showing the trick off and I just couldn't do it. I hate the trick. Okay. Um, yeah. What categories is it most useful in then? RBL. Like... That's about it. Reverse okay, boss okay. So just Okay, cool. So then you um, don't have to worry about it that often anyway. No, which is no. Good. <laughs> um, one thing I do want to ask real quick, um, the chats, what boss do you want to see me kill first? So I can do this in any order and really show off still the same tricks. So any boss that you want to see, and I have to know right now. So am I going up to Fantoon? Am I going down to Kraid? Am I going to Dragon? Am I going to Ridley? Um, what would people like to see? All right, first, first, let's say like three posts in chat of the same boss, we'll go yes. do that. Um, I don't want to tell you how long it took me to get through the dash room. I don't, I'm not gonna. The I'm dash room, oh, okay, the new bridge. Yes, we, we won't bridge. have to. We won't go through that. I'm not gonna um, not talk about that. Ridley, okay. Ridley, Ridley. I see. I see a few Ridleys. Yep. We'll go to. Ridley. I think there's Why a not? lot of Ridleys. Rodney. So um, we will do the RBO route, I suppose. Then, um, luckily, I already have a lot of the items, and um, I did turn them off. Quite a few of them. So. Um, I'll, I'll just collect some stuff along the way, like I traditionally would. And if people have questions about some of the strats that they see, um, please don't hesitate to ask and I'll, I'll talk okay. about it. But I'll try to get through most of the stuff that we traditionally do. So instead of going to Kraid, we will go down to Ridley. Beautiful. Very cool. So as you're like going through any percent, kind of learning it, you say like you, you've kind of discussed the first two things you'd want to learn. But what's like, what's the biggest form of movement that you would suggest to people who are just getting into Super Metroid? Like wall jumping or like, um, what's going to be the most useful to them? I like think, arm pumping or? I think, no, arm pumping, well, I would never even worry about that. But <laughs> um, I would worry about the movement first before arm pumping. I'd say the first thing that I would worry about is probably... <sighs> wall jumps or understanding the hitbox of the game. So without having mm -hmm. a hitbox viewer, which I can maybe bring up later, um, the uh, the game has numerous different hitboxes. And that's mm -hmm. whenever you hear someone say, um, we are going to ledge grab or we have to down grab this. Um, okay, there we got him. Had to unlock the door. Um, that has to do with Samus's hitbox. So... Let me just talk about that real quick then. Okay, so great. Morph is the smallest hitbox in the game. Mm -hmm. um, crouch, I want to say, I think it goes then down, aiming down is the second smallest. Crouching is the third. Oh, and then this is the largest. Spinning is also somewhere in between. So since this standing animation is larger of a hitbox than this, you can go from this to that in one frame. It's instantaneous. So what we do mm -hmm. is we go from a small hitbox to a large hitbox to expand because you're faster on the ground. 
So once you understand the hitboxes, um, we kind of just see the game that way. So Samus spinning is a small hitbox. And then when you ledge grab and break out of spin, you expand and then you have a much faster hitbox. So, you know, you can do very, very fast movement techniques with, you know, you're with that landing, knowledge, you're essentially. Not... Interesting. That's yes. very cool. People are also talking about short charge. Yep, I'll get to that. Yep. Perfect. Eventually, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Beam combos right. and the crystal flash are super cool. Well, I love that in the even in the menu, it's just like showing you cool secrets. Yeah, stuff. the the devs did know that you could do some cool stuff. So love that. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and grab ice here, um, which I could just turn it back on, but. I, I want to go through stuff if people have questions as well. So, mm -hmm. um, how often do you use like those dev, quote unquote, hidden techniques in speedruns? Um, I mean, I, I think we use everything. So, I think oh, what cool. the 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 game shows is uh, like the bomb jumping in the introduction is one mm -hmm. thing. We do use bomb jumping, um, yeah, horizontal bomb really jumping, useful. and like different techniques. Um, mm -hmm. And then, um, what else do we use? Um, I'm trying to think if anything is shown. X Factor is not shown in the intro, but um, they're, I guess, yeah, they, they did intend that. Um, that was like a little uh, Easter Ish. egg thing, kind of, I suppose. But yeah, we do use a lot of that stuff. Gotcha. Um, I see Brain Buster question mark. That's also just a meme. I, if that's, that's for you, that's strike two, I'd say. Uh, it's no, somebody oh, else no, it's asked. not. Okay. Good, good. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was tempted to ask. <laughs> so instead of going around, we're just going to go up Bubble Mountain. We're going to go grab Speed oh, Booster. Um, oh, I'll talk about uh, damage boosting as well. This is very, where very I... Important. No, this isn't where I sequence broke. I did it by accident once. So even though I have a ton of E-Tanks, I am going to, um, I am going to refill a little bit. We do need some HP. Um, I also need to grab some missile packs because we do lose all of our missiles. So since I'm going to Ridley first, I will need the Crystal Flash, which is, um, something that we'll be seeing shortly here once I get to mm -hmm. the lava area. How's your health just going up and down at the same time? Um, I am supposed to have Varia. So, um... I'm trying to out farm the damage being done to me in the heated area. Um, and sometimes oh. these, these bugs are very stingy. So I'm using grapple to kill these bugs. Grapple is also a useful tool that we can use to like instantly um, kill the enemies, some enemies. Cool. All right, so we're just going to go on, grab speed booster. May as well mock ball, free up my hands a little bit. I didn't consider the fact that you would need a Vario suit here because I have it casually, so. Yeah, casually you never come to this area. And casually you also wouldn't have as many E-Tanks as I have. So like sure. I said, I'm <laughs> cheating a little bit, but I'll uh, I'll show how you can cheat as well. Yeah, we get to learn, chat. Yes. All right, so speed booster, obviously a very important item for our speed runs. Um, and then this, this is very important because we can use it for short charging which is kind of a way to break the item traditionally. Mm -hmm. um, generally, there's a certain amount of space that you need in order to use this. And we actually exploit the way that the developers made this. Um, let me go ahead and uh, save here, actually. Um, we exploit the way the developers made uh, Speed Booster. Um, to our advantage. So we can get our our charge and our spark, our shine spark, in a much, much shorter distance. And um, once I get to a place in Lower Norfair, I will explain how that is done. Cool. I didn't Since see. Uh, yeah, traditionally where that is used kind of for the first time is um, in Lower Norfair to get uh, through some of the tougher areas. You have to have a number of E-Tanks just to get through this area. 
Yes. Yeah, so great. in RBO, you would run around and you would grab a bunch of E-Tanks. I'm not going to waste my time, you right, know, right, right. grabbing the boring stuff. So I will grab all this stuff, even though I have it. Let's just get double of everything to show off some of the rooms. Um, and as you would see, like generally, this I think this is probably the first sequence break that everybody did at first. You're supposed to have grapple for this, but of course, nobody needs it. You can wall jump. The animals teach you how to wall jump, so why wouldn't you just do that? If you're um, bad at it, I wouldn't know from experience, but you know. Yeah, of course. Since you're, you're bad I'm sure you're at great it, at it, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to go through here, hopefully survive our way so we can get to the first crystal flash that we need. Um, crystal flashing is a technique used to refill everything that you have. Um, one thing that you need to have, though, is uh, no reserves. You can't have any reserves at all. And you need to have 10 missiles, at least 10 super missiles, and 11 power bombs. Okay. 11 power bombs because you need 10 power bombs to crystal flash, but you need one to activate the trick in the first place. So um, we're going to come over here, and then I will Ooh. crystal flash before I do something called the lava dive. Okay, so we're going to let my health go down a little bit. Uh, we're going to use the power bomb to open the door and crystal flash at the same time. So once my health gets around 80, I'm going to lay a bomb, and then I'm going to hold down, left, right, and shoot. So what that's going to do is my health is now below 50. And since I have nothing in my reserves, and I have all of that ammo that I needed, Whoa. that just uh, fills up essentially everything I have. That's so. right. Yeah, that's one of those. Okay. Okay, so this is doing a lot of damage, but one thing we can do here is kind of use this to our advantage. Very viscous lava, I suppose. We can wall jump up here and just make our way Ooh. as you would in like an RBO category. So um, I am going to, even though I, I've already admitted to cheating already <laughs> many times, we are going to cheat once again. Um, and maybe Ridley won't be as fun as you thought it would be because uh, I'm going to show off a little something here that was left in the game by the developers. Ooh, okay. Yes. Um, I cannot do that for Rid uh, Ridley. I haven't tested it, and uh, I will do it for Mother Brain, though, for you. The murder beam? Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and green gate glitch. So if you're at the right position here, pixels away from a gate, you push forward and then you shoot as you're about to hit the top. That actually opens a gate, a left facing gate. You know, you're not supposed to open it from that way, but the super missile actually goes through. So okay. yeah, kind of a fun way to go That's about really it. That's really cool. You can do that with every gate or? Not every gate. All right, so one thing we're going to do here is I am going to run through this room and I am going to hold all of my face buttons. So Y, X, A, and B. What that's going to do is that's going to give me a lot of items and I'll show you here shortly. So let's pretend I didn't even have anything. Um, it doesn't matter what I have here. Pretend that there's nothing. So this was left in by the developers. It's a developer code. So we're going to run through. I'm holding all the face buttons. Let go of the face buttons. And look at that. Now I'm no longer oh, taking damage. Oh. Um, I, I have 100 missiles, 20, 20. And you'll see that I have 700 HP. So it actually is a weird thing with this. This is the only instance to where you have... A zero zero with full health. Generally, you have mm -hmm. a nine nine. So for some reason, that last seventh E tank is just one. I just get one health, um, and that's it. Um, and it's going to stay that way. Those top E tanks that are blanked out, those don't even exist now. I deleted them. So now I have everything except screw attack. Um, this is a developer code. This is a Golden Torizo co code, GT code that was left in the game, I'm sure, for testing. So we use it for some categories. Um, one thing is, if you shoot, you'll see that every single beam is selected. This will crash the game, and I'm not going to show that. Oh. We will do some stuff with all the beam combos later, but I'm not going to crash the game right now. 
Um, it should be allowed in speedruns. Um, this is a separate category, Bricklayer. Um, so we're gonna turn off Spazer. Plasma is the strongest um, item in the game, the strongest beam in the game. And we'll go ahead and kill uh, Golden Threezo here. You also saw, I mean, like you just passed through attack as well. Yes, yeah. so we didn't grab screw attack for a reason. So if we grab it early, it just doesn't exist, and this would have deleted the screw attack that we just grabbed. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, yes. okay. that makes sense. So in order to, you know, still have screw attack. Access to it, yeah. Yeah, uh, we're going to go ahead and grab these super missiles. Gotcha. wonder how intentional or unintentional the code is. Um, I think they probably just forgot to take it out of the game, would be my guess. But who knows? Um, it, it works from both sides. So it works from this door and it works from the, the door on the left. It's basically just when you enter the room. Gotcha. Okay. So now, like I said, it's going to be probably not as fun as you thought it would be going to Ridley first. So I should have told you that, but you know, you guys wanted Ridley first. So we'll do Ridley first. Um, so short charging, let me show that off here. Right. Perfect. Yeah. So this other room is where we kind of need to do the first short charge. Um, so the game, if I could, if I could pause it, I could do that after this. We could, I could open up the practice ROM and I could show you guys in a lot more detail if you, if you'd like. But if you see Samus's left leg, I'm gonna push forward and Samus will kick upwards her left leg. If you can see that, it's kind of hard to see. I, I guess speedrunners, maybe I'm a little bit trained to see it sure. but um there is one frame that the developers put to check to see if you're holding the run button and that frame happens to be when samus's left uh, leg and foot go up and kick her behind essentially you know okay, so um that is the frame that we just need to press uh run on really hard to tell yeah so generally it would take this entire i, I don't even get it here See, I'm not even getting, yeah. um, I'm not even turning blue. So if we cheat Whoa. or use an exploit that the developers, probably an oversight, but, or, or it probably was a way to um, reduce uh, processing with the hardware that they had to deal with. Um, we can get it in a much shorter distance. So we use this to our advantage in speed runs a lot and there is kind of a rhythm to it um i can explain it in more detail later and you'll see stuff like this to where um you stutter that basically just puts that frame a little bit ahead of just holding forward so you can get very very short distances um with this technique um, this is kind of the first place that we use it and um i'll show kind of what we would normally do in a speed run is we kind of learn how to do this this and then you you spark through these pillars here cool so, okay very cool yeah well. so that's uh short charging is probably one of the harder techniques to learn in the game but it is um definitely one of the most useful techniques it avoids having to change the animation cycle great mid cycle okay yeah there's gotcha. there's definitely advantages to why they did that they did it for a reason it's a very uh, talented deer force, I guess I'll say. A very talented crew that made this game. And I guess they were rushed as well, so. All right, we're gonna make our way down to Ridley. Um, nothing too, uh, too fancy with Ridley, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. There is a couple, couple shenanigans you can do, but uh, we'll just try to make quick work. Let's try to get keep, through here. Keep teasing how like uneventful it's gonna be. I'm so curious. <laughs> no, I wish I had something cool with Ridley, but uh, okay. <laughs> unfortunately I don't, yeah. Um, Shine Sparking does kill these guys. Um, I know they're they're a pain in a casual playthrough um, because they are very difficult to turn around, but uh, yeah. you just gotta get behind them and then they will, they will uh, be aggressive. Gotcha. How do you, did you see that? How did you, how do you midair shine spark? Yes. Um, midair shine sparking is when you, uh, you have a charge and there's a couple different ways that you can break out of spin. So 
when you are spinning and you're shining and you're, you're flashing, like ready to shine spark, you can either press R, which is what I generally do, or you can press up. Anything to break you out of spin. Um, and then what you do after that is you'll be in the animation to shine spark, and then you press the direction you want to go, and then you press jump. And that's how you would horizontal shine spark. If you're on the ground and you're holding angle up, um, you will uh, diagonal shine spark if you press jump just with angle up. So um, you'll be seeing quite a bit of that coming up as well. We we pretty much use every form of shine sparking. So. Gotcha. So Ridley's fairly easy. Uh, 20 shots or a lot of super missiles. It's 20 exactly. 20 exactly. So uh, a little bit of math is uh, 900 uh, damage per charge shot. And Ridley and Mother Brain both have uh, 18,000 HP. So they have the same amount. They do, yes. Ridley oh, is probably um, one of the tougher, tougher bosses. Yes, yeah, I'll, I'll show the beam combos. Um, there's only so many different ways to sure. uh, show this without the practice ROM, which I'd like to just keep the vanilla cart in. But let me show off the different beam combos while we're here. Yeah. Um, so one thing about this game is there are beam combinations or beam combos, beam attacks. If you have charge with any any other beam, just just the one beam selected. So right now I just have ice and you select power bombs. Um, see how it's green? Then you just hold charge. And then every beam has its own unique, um, you know, I guess attack. Um, this is kind of like an ice shield. So it protects you. It's pretty weak. This is mm -hmm. only used in some categories. Um, but yes, it's uh, kind of neat. A lot of people don't know that that exists. Um, another beam combo, and uh, this unfortunately doesn't change anything. It just changes the color, which is cool, but um, it doesn't change the damage, unfortunately. Sure. Another beam combination cool. is um, X-Factors. We do use this. This is the most useful beam combination in the game and because um, it's it's just the strongest. Every, every single particle, there's four particles, and they deal the same amount of damage as a super missile. And super missiles are quite powerful in the speedruns. So mm -hmm. um, we actually use this during the Ridley fight, generally. Um, we kind of guide this in certain ways to manipulate it to all hit and converge on certain bosses. Um, so this is a very, very useful um, attack. I will show um, the bot swoon fight and the dragon fight with X-Factors when we get there. Okay, um, cool. Probably just the bot swoon fight because Dragon, we have some fun stuff to do with that fight, so. Okay. Um, there's also Spazer. I don't know the technical name for this and I won't even say what we generally call it, but um, this That's is cool. the most useless. It's it's cool, it's like Sparklers, 4th oh. of okay, July. Okay, it just looks cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it is absolutely useless. Um, but still cool, I suppose, nonetheless. Uh, oops, got to turn this off. And this, unfortunately, is also quite useless. It's very difficult to actually utilize the plasma. But um, this is also, I believe, as powerful as the um, X Factor. So it could be a very good attack, but it's just way too hard to control and actually mm -hmm. utilize. So that is the beam combos, and I'll be showing off X-Factors, which is the most common thing that we use in the speedrun uh, a little bit later in Meridia. Okay, so we're going to turn everything back on. We are going to... Uh, why not? We'll just grab as many E-Tanks as we possibly can. Because then I get to show off what the, uh, the title screen looks like a little bit later. Ooh, okay. That sounds good to me. Okay. So we're going to make our way out of Lower Norfair. And uh, we will head probably to Dragon. Because at this point in the game, we have kind of what we need for every single right, boss. I, I forget how many bosses there are total in this game. 
uh, four. Um, there are many bosses, though. Um, okay, so. I guess that's, that's what I mean included, because I know that, like, you have to get the main bosses out of the way, but... Yeah, so I think it's eight, and then Mother Brain is nine, I want to say. Okay, so eight with mini bosses, and then your final. Yes, so one thing you're going to see in the speedrun as well, and this is what we do in quite a few different speedruns, is um, see how there's just one tile here? Mm -hmm. um, we actually clip through these tiles. So if you remember how I was talking about how um, spin jumping is a smaller hitbox, and then you have um, this when you break out a spin, which is a a, a, a little bit bigger of a hitbox. We like utilize the mid -jump that. aiming down. Um, the um, yes, yep, or up, yep. Aiming okay. down like this is a smaller hitbox. We don't use that for these clips, right. but um, we use these oh. because it expands. This would shrink. So um, is it going to push you through because your hitbox goes taller? Yes, exactly. Ooh, so okay. we're spinning, we expand our hitbox, and then let's see if I can actually do this. And then that pushes us through oh. the tiles. Yes, so we actually use this in quite a few different areas um, to clip through little, little blocks. It is um, acceptable. We've deemed it acceptable on the no major glitch category. So um, okay. yeah, there are some things that we cannot do, of course. And uh, yeah. All of those things we're going to see, most of those things we're going to see today. I'm with that. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we're going to make our way out. There are plenty of E tanks I could be grabbing, but I already have, I think, enough to convey the points after I uh, <laughs> yeah. reset the game a little bit later on. Sure. And, um, um, Yes, we, we included bomb trees. I, I believe it's four. I don't think we count Shack Tool as a uh, mini boss, unless you want. Mi Shack Tool actually does have an attack that is an unused attack in the game. So in the game, we always say that Spore Spawn is innocent, but um, deep down inside, Spore Spawn actually has a dark side and wants to hurt us. So remember that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what was I going to say? Um, oh, for randomizer, what, like, is it kind of like a no major glitches type of thing, or do you allow that for rando? Um, rando is, we do whatever we can. There are some exceptions, like we can't, um, we, we have to still do the objectives, which is kill all the bosses. Sure. But um, pretty much everything is acceptable on those, yeah. I'm sorry, what did I say? Did I say Shack Tool? Yes, Shack Tool. Okay. Yes. So before we leave the area, we're going to pay a visit to probably one of the more passive creatures in this game. And um, it's actually quite sad, the story of Krokemeyer. But um, we will uh, we'll pay Krokemeyer a visit and uh, see what's going on. Okay. <laughs> oh, like a friendly hello. Yes, a friendly hello. Unfortunately, it won't end friendly, but uh, we'll enter with good intentions. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, we are not supposed to have plasma, and we're not supposed to have grapple. Of course, Krokemeyer is guarding grapple, so there's no possible way that we should have this at this point. But... If you do have it, oh, and also see, Croc Meyer's just saying hello. Not even hello. attacking, nothing. Croc does nothing wrong, and Samus is kind of a monster. Croc, um, can we say hello? We will say hello with the grapple beam. So, oh, that's great. Um, we're not supposed to have this. So, one interesting thing that happens is, uh, yeah. A lot of weird stuff. So <laughs> epilepsy warning, um, I will say that now. There's gonna be a lot of flashing on screen, so don't look okay. if that's a problem. Um, Whoa. We're not supposed to have plasma as well. Whoa. So plasma, goodbye tongue. Plasma oh. just automatically destroys Krokemeyer. And uh, we're just going for a ride. Yeah, we're just gonna, we're just going and going and going. Um, let's just get out of the acid, shall we? And um, Krokemeyer is just floating right now. 
So we're just bringing them all the way to the E-Tank and uh, we'll we'll drop Croc off at the very end, why not? Yeah, to, you know, extend or prolong his inevitable acid bath. Oh. Whoa. Yeah, this oh. is one of the more hardcore scenes oh. in the game. I think it's also <laughs> probably the coolest. It's probably took them the most time to actually make the developers. Yeah. Let's just make let's just make the players feel like <laughs> Yeah. Um so this right here is um one thing that we found <laughs> I wanna say somewhat recently, but yeah, it's probably not that recent. Um as you can see I'm just floating. I'm blue. What happened is when I have a spark, if I press um, on morph or up the frame after I take damage and I believe it's eight or nine frames after press jump again so it's essentially a double frame perfect trick we get to um, have this this state this animation what this does for us is actually um, quite interesting and useful oh. for many speedruns so right now we don't have um, a spark or anything but we do have one stored. So it oh. allows us to use a shine spark anywhere that we want, as long as we don't lose it, which is very easy to lose, so. Because like, as soon as you press A basically, or? Um, yeah, if you if you press A while standing still, or if you press R or up when you're in the air, there's so many different ways you can lose it. Okay. So um, you it have is a to, very like, stressful always... trick. And jump basically if you want to move around with it or yes yeah oh geez okay okay so we will go uh you know what we have gravel a little bit of muscle memory taking over as i explain things we don't need gravel there's nothing fun over there we don't need two grapples that would just be greedy so right we're going to uh i did collect those power bombs just in case i need to show something so, off with so Crystal doing Blast. like a screw attack wall jump combo is faster than just screw attack jumping oh uh with with right? uh space jumping yes or space so, jumping sorry that's what i meant space jumping. yes space jumping is quite slow unless you're underwater so it's kind of a, a hmm. weird property where if you're above water or on the surface it's it's really difficult to use okay um if you are underwater you can almost just spam it constantly gotcha interesting yeah no it doesn't turn into the long shot <laughs> yeah Grapple cool plus i was gonna make a joke when you first got the second morph ball to be like oh we're gonna get extra tiny and you just imagine <laughs> you just ball and then you ball again that would like be the cool size of but... little dots right next to samus right now in the elevator Unfortunately, that does not happen, so... Um, yeah. We're gonna go pay Croc a visit. Uh, Croc is generally the first or the third boss, but if you're new to the game, Croc is going to be the first boss mm -hmm. that you're trying to take out. So we're gonna pay Croc Meyer a visit here. And uh, there's a couple different ways that we can uh, show off Croc. Okay. But um, one way does prevent us from continuing and it soft locks the game. So we'll probably skip that. Oh, yeah, since we don't really have a save. Thing. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I'll probably... You know what, we'll... Uh... We'll go for a little ride, I suppose. So you can just disappear. Oh, whoa, whoa! Yeah. Wait, what? What? Did you just just do? off the screen. I no longer am here. Yes. What? What did you do? What? What just happened? So uh, you can just damage boost behind Crade uh, here and just. No, sorry, not Croc. Crade. I play too many randos, so I get all the bosses mixed up, and my chat always makes fun of me, so... It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing that you can do, let's see if I can actually do it, since I don't have my proper setup here. Um, you, uh, we do a quick kill, and uh, basically oh, wow. what happens is... Whoa. 
Um, Croc has different animations when um, Kraid has different animations when he's I don't opening know if his I mouth. Correct you. Yeah, no, it's okay. Please correct me. Um, Croc, Kraid, they're both big giant lizards. It's fine. They're yeah. probably in the same amphibious family of some sort. Um, so there's different animations. So if you fire a super missile as Kraid is opening his mouth um, on the second animation, that will actually lock Kraid's mouth open. And uh, that allows you to kill Kraid uh, without having to go through the second phase. Um, That's really cool. A little side effect here is you can kind of go out of bounds a little Whoa. bit. So, um, Whoa! Yeah. Um, so yeah, just hanging out above the map. But um, if we... Are you screen working right now? Yeah. Um, so I head. jumped on top of the platform. Um, before I grabbed this, which we already have one, but um, let's uh, show off something a little bit fun. Okay. Um, so generally... You're not supposed to be able to get a shine spark. Okay. Um, oh, I oh. did hit. We'll we'll try it with something else later, but let's okay. see if I if anything happened. Oh. Oh, that's what happened. Is that? Ooh, that's not good. Wait a minute. Uh, we're gonna reset that. Yeah, that's 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 no good at all. Wait, was that supposed to happen? Um, yeah. Yeah, that was supposed to happen. Um, totally. Yeah. I believe you. Yeah, I believe you. <laughs> I agree. Um, it didn't happen in the practice ROM, but I guess it's happening now. So, you know what? We, we, we'll we deal with that. We'll go pay Croc. Crade. 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 Crade one more Crade. visit. However, I now Croc is still alive, but we'll leave Croc alive for now. No, no second acid bath. It's all part of the show, yes. Yep. Um, we're sparing we're sparing Croc this time. So one cool part about this game is there are so many tricks and glitches that I am not able to show. They are way too volatile. I feel like probably even for unless it's all prepared pre you know like it, it to do it live is very, very difficult. Sure. Um, there are a lot of things that are... We did, we did get a crash. Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. We did get a crash, yeah. Uh, it's probably think... because um, you're not supposed to hit the platform. You're supposed to go above the platform, so I think that's probably what happened. So since okay. I bonked the platform, that crashes the game. So we're trying it again right now. Um... Okay. And then we'll I, probably, I guess uh, we can try it one more time, unless it's it's um, a practice romp thing only. But uh, yeah, we can give we it can a try shot. It one more time. Yeah. Yeah, and then maybe yeah, and see if we save here, it's easier, right? Yeah, exactly. We'll be yeah. closer. Um, May as well. Yeah, and then we'll get up and take a quick stretch, and then and then we'll see some more. Okay. All right, I'm ready. Yeah, there's a lot We're of little afraid. silly things in this. That, um, also potentially crash the game, but we'll try to show them off too. Why not? And if it gets too bad, I'll, I'll, I'll just boot up the, the practice ROM as well. Um, we do have some really cool tools that allow us to kind of, you know, do anything that we want in the game. Which you love. Um, yeah, I mean, happy to see that. And again, like, like you're saying with anything that seems really volatile, like if there is a point in which we're like, hey, we got a little extra time, let's, let's just try it. Like we can. Yeah. There's no reason that we have to just totally avoid them all, but... So, this is generally what uh, the croc fight looks like here. And uh, earlier when I was... Uh, Raid. Damaged, or, uh, Craig, Craig, thank you. Uh, fight, this is kind of just what was happening. You just kind of just oh. hang out back here. You know. So. He's like, mm, where'd you Yeah, go? um, do you mind not doing that? Yeah. There's also something funny called Zombie Kraid. What that Ooh. what happens with that is um, essentially the game just soft locks and you the Kraid just sits there and never dies and Oh weird. Yeah. So we'll see if this works on console one more time at least. Um, yeah, we are above it. Definitely above it this time. Yes, we are above it, yeah. Let's see. 
There we go. Oh, just there. a little little funny thing there. Yeah, you kind of just, if you do it diagonally without um, taking a hit, um, without bonking anything, you also just go diagonal just forever. slide. Yeah. If there was no wall there, you would just keep going, right? You, you just keep going, yeah. Awesome. It's a lot of little silly oh, there's things. There's the baby crane. Okay, perfect. Why don't we maybe hit a save room or something, and then we can uh, take a quick break. Sure, sounds good. Okay, because we need to get up and stretch. Make sure you stay nice and awake. We're having a good time. This is super cool so far, by the way, you all. I hope that you all are, are enjoying it as much as I am, because I'm having a great time. I love learning about all this stuff. Yes, and after Especially... this, we will uh, see Dragon, a couple cool things with that, with items we're not supposed to have, and um, <laughs> then uh, some other brain fun stuff, so. Perfect. Okay, cool. I'm really excited about that. Also, while we are on our break, if you're just hanging out and you'd like something to do, you know, Flame Fate Tales is coming up this weekend. It starts on Sunday, which is wild. I'm leaving for it in like two days. Um, very excited. It's going to be awesome. It's our all women in fence speed running event, 12 hours a day. Um, so go check out the schedule. You can do exclamation FF in chat. Uh, and just, yeah, let me know what you're looking forward to. I think there's some awesome, awesome runs coming up. I think that's super cool. We'll also be at PAX West from August 30th to September 2nd, and we'll be at TwitchCon for GDQX September 20th to the 22nd. So all kinds of cool stuff to look forward to. Um, and look at more info coming up for that. So lots of things you can look at while we're on a quick break and we will be right back you all with more Super Metroid.
are back with more Out of Bounds. Hello, if you are just joining us, I am Kung Fu Fruit Cup, and I am here joined by Oats and Goats today, who's been showing off the glitches in Super Metroid, and it's been awesome. Hello, Oats. Um, Hello. I'm excited for more of this. It's been great so far. Um, if y'all missed it, we fought Croc, and then we fought Croc. Um, and then Croc. <laughs> other again, known and as... then Croc, yeah. <laughs> One of them was Kraid. Uh, you know, there was Kraid was somewhere in there. Mostly Croc, though. Anyway, um, let's get back into it. Uh, feel free to take us through. Again, if you all have questions, feel free to ask. We are here um, to answer those. Uh, and by we, I mean I will help ask them as well, and Oats will answer all of them. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, whenever you're ready, let's keep going. Yeah, okay, so we left off with uh, some basic uh, crate stuff and some of the, like, the crate quick kill and stuff like that. So we're going to make our way to... Uh, the final boss, uh, Fantoon. Fantoon is one of the first bosses that we traditionally fight in um, the faster any percent routes, but um, right now we're doing Fantoon last. Or no, well, well, no. We still got Dragon. We'll do Dragon. That's right, we do have Dragon. Yeah, yes. Dragon and Fantoon. We have Croc and then we have Croc. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we shall go up to uh, then Water Mama Brain. Yeah. I love learning about all of the nicknames for bosses in the series, especially because there's a lot of repeat bosses, so people just have their own nicknames. Today was, I, I don't know why I haven't heard Chorizo before, but I love that. I know it's yes. not actually boss material, but like, oh, it's just my favorite. Rodney and uh, what are some of your other favorites as we're kind um, of making our way through here? I don't know. I a ride like Rodney, yeah. Um, yeah. I just call Sports Bond the salad boss. <laughs> that's good. I think that's very appropriate. Um, so like I was saying earlier, um, we use some beam combinations that a lot of people don't even know exist. Um, one of them being Charge Wave, which is X Factor. So how we traditionally do the fight in the speedrun is like this. Let me just get the loadout that we would normally have. I think this is all fine. And then we enter the room in a specific way with full run speed for a little bit of a setup. We kind of manipulate the way the particles move across the screen. Okay, that might actually cause issues because X-ray is no, never there, but... We'll see. Okay, well, we almost got it, but as you can see, Whoa. we hit we hit all our particles. Um, and those just so happened to hit. It was very cool how it worked. But um, you could see by the, the first, all four particles hit um, because we move in such a way to where the particles kind of follow us and then they, they kind of all converge on this portion here. So this is one um, one way that we utilize the beam combinations. Um, it's extremely useful. Oh, so fast. That's so cool. We will uh, go ahead and grab the seed tank since I did do the, um, the GT code. Um, I would like to end with more than we're supposed to have, but maybe at this point I won't be able to, but we'll see. That's okay. Um, um, and also, remember, we'll need the explanation on, like, how you got some of the... How, how we started the showcase today, how you got there. Yes, of course. Okay, dope. <laughs> so this is a little trick called full halfy. Um, basically, at one point, it was deemed to be impossible, ass only. But uh, as we get better as players, um, it becomes very, very simple to where we can do it as I'm explaining things. Um, yep. Once you get better at the game with wall jumping and stuff, you basically have to keep your charge all the way to the top. And um, yeah, you can shine spark across the entire thing. So there's a couple different ways that we kill Dragon. Um, one way is with the uh, short charging, like I was talking about earlier. We would short charge and we would shine spark actually through Dragon. And that allows us to get something called blue suit afterwards. Um, oh. With these items, however, which we're not supposed to have, you're not supposed to have plasma until you kill Dragon. So one thing we can do is with plasma and x-ray is something called the uh, microwave. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and just microwave the shrimp here, which is dangerous. Don't do it. That's some sort of uh, food violation, I'm sure. Oh, that's what chat was talking about. I see. <laughs> so... 
there is a shot traveling through the air, but I am buffering with X-Ray. And what that's going to do is every time it hits Dragon, you can see the color changing. It is going to reset the iframes and then just hit Dragon again for another 900 and then another 900. Um, I'm going to let Dragon live. And I'm going to show you what we normally do in a speed run. Okay, but what you... You could have just done that until... Yep, until Dragon dies. But this is what Wait. we generally do in a speed run is we kill Dragon with the technique earlier, like I was talking about with short charging. And we oh. horizontal shine spark into Dragon. And then that there's a weird property that happens. We we get blue suit if you do it properly. Oh, we're blue. Yes. And oh. uh, this is uh, kind of unique to hold on to. So if I press run at any time, I will lose this, this unique property. Um, if I press down, I can then charge it and use it. But I'm going to hold on to it for just a second. Um, so does so that mean we'll only have, um, you only have it until you use it? Like if, if you use another... Yeah, so if I press run, in? if I press run at all, I lose it. Um, and so I obviously can't uh, charge or anything with it. With uh... Or pressing down. Like nope, nope. This is actually oh, different no. from the, the spark suit or the spike suit. Oh, okay. Um, this has its own unique properties to where, let's say I want to walk on sand and break blocks. I can just run through everything without, you know, ever having any issues. However, if you sink through the, the sand, you will lose it. But, you know, a fun little thing to do with that is just run around and feel indestructible because you can run through every single block in the game that you're not supposed to. Oh, um, so cool. Yeah, so we're going to let that one go away for now since uh, I don't want to walk the rest of the the uh, little run here. So. You have places to be. Yeah, gotta yeah, go fight exactly. Croc. Remember that time? Yeah, we got to fight Croc again, yes. <laughs> we're going to fight uh, the uh, ghost Croc now up in the wreck ship. Hmm. I love how just some some simple slip ups just turn into everything's crocked now. That's, that's <laughs> you my know bad. what? We have that's fun with bad. it. Yeah. <laughs> I I play so many randomizers sometimes in in a single day that I am everything seems like the same randomizer. Even if sure. I if I've played five randos, I go, which one is this? Is this the one that had this layout? Did I already kill Fantoon or was that like three ago? So yeah, it's, I see. It's, sometimes my brain just rewires everything. Yeah. Would you say you go through about? Is that like your average about five per per day per stream? Like um, when you're doing just randomizers? Five is a problem. I think three is uh, more. You know, probably what I should be doing. Five is too many. <laughs> I think that's going to be uh, some sort of damage. Okay. You know, if I if I do five, but yeah, sometimes I'll do five. Generally, I think it's like three. Uh, we're going to go ahead and save, um, just in case. We're not doing anything crazy, but um, I like ship. to at least have something here. I see we have less energy tanks than we used to. Yes, so when I did the GT code, that gave us only the the seven, or the six, and then the one E tank with uh, just one HP. Okay, um, well, that's it's why been it says zero, showing, zero. it's been showing, like, the grayed out extra ones for a while, but is it because you got another E tank that it yes. then corrected yep. it? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, just so like those a never existed. Glitch. Okay, that yeah. makes more sense. Cool. They were there, but they had no no uh, uh, value essentially. Yeah. Cool. Oh, quick. So we're gonna make our way to Fantoon, and um, traditionally in the speed run unless you're playing gt classic we use something called dopplering and i will show that off you can also use the microwave technique mm -hmm. um, to take care of fantoon but since i already showed that on dragon um, i'll explain dopplering which is the technique that cool. we use in the speed run perfect yeah the microwaving was really really cool somebody asked about um or the current or the new route for any percent did somebody specific route that or was that like a team effort do you know um that was back in 2014 behemoth and some others um made it uh, rta viable essentially um, it was a new route? past thing gotcha. yeah 
Yeah, new, new route, that's 2014. So new route's 10 years old now at this point. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, let me take off what we would not have in the speedrun, which is pretty much nothing. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Aww. Baby Samus. So one thing in this game is if you um, walk towards Fantoon and you start to fire uh, missiles in a certain order, you see how Fantoon just, or in a certain rhythm rather, Fantoon will just essentially be stun locked. So we use this technique, it's called Dopplering, to essentially stun lock Fantoon and um, kill traditionally in a couple cycles, but I'll show the Dopplering one more time here. So basically it's like tap, 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 tap. If you walk forward and you have a rhythm like that, um, you can get a lot of missiles in. And you can actually do a one round with that kind of technique, um, which was deemed task only, and it's incredibly difficult. So usually it's, it's like a two cycle. Usually it's a two cycle, but um, you can one round kill Fantoon, and that's essentially numerous frame perfect, uh, you know, uh, presses, and it's it's very difficult. Um, a lot of runners go for it now, and um, we do get it in runs. It's kind of becoming the norm over time, mm -hmm. which is annoying, but that's the way these things go. That's how it works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Unfortunately for some runners, yeah, it's like, oh, great, we found this really cool glitch or the skip, and it's like really, really early in the run and it's really hard or like it's it, actually no wait when you find it late in the run and it's like really hard. Yeah, and, that's the worst. You know, yeah. Low success rate. Then you're like, great. Yeah. Won't know until we get there each time. I've seen it happen a bunch. Like now that we have carpet list, for example, and like Mario 64, that's like a really big, well-known thing. Yeah, that's a crazy trick to mm -hmm. be doing in real time, yeah. Um, so people are asking, why not use supers? So if I use super missiles, uh, what happens is Fantoon will enrage. So you'll, you will see runners never using supers until we know Fantoon is about to die. So Fantoon has okay. 2,500 HP. Every missile does 100. So we keep track of the damage that we're dealing until we hit 1,900. Um, 1,900 delt, and then that means one super missile, which generally deals 300, but to Fantoon and Ridley deal 600. No idea oh. why. Um, we will use the super to finish off the fight. If we do it too early, Fantoon enrages. And um, we'll sit up top, indestructible, we'll fire flames, and um, it's a real pain. So You just don't want to let it enter that state. Yeah, it's a huge waste of time. And in a yeah. speed run, you're going to be resetting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's make our way to uh, Mother Brain. And um, we can, if people do have questions um, about some of the bosses or kills or want me to break down more of the um, things that maybe I didn't break down, um, definitely ask and I'll try to break it down with the practice run. And um, yeah. There's still, there's there's a lot to this game that I would probably mm -hmm. sit here for 10 hours explaining, but um, I'm an old man and bedtime's calling soon, you know? <laughs> well, I think we might have a little time for like some actual, um, a little Q&A. So if we do have some, le yes, let's say to, legitimate yes. questions, put that. <laughs> yes, yes, legitimate questions. So no Ryu questions, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did we do space time beam already? Um, I'm going to be showing that off coming up, and cool. I will show it off in two different ways. Um, well, space time and murder beam. Mm -hmm. uh, the supers versus Fantoon was just answered as well. Yes, essentially, if you fire a super before Fantoon dies, if it doesn't kill Fantoon, um, Fantoon will enrage, and that loses a lot of time. Right. Um, somebody also asked about the differences in straps between 100% and any percent. Um, basically, that comes down to the room and the items that you have. Um, in terms of difficulty, mm -hmm. they're, you know, they're they're pretty equal. They're they're just different categories, um, yeah, with different their own different difficulties, essentially. Um, sure. What uh, percentage of items do you have when you finish the any percent? 
Um, you have generally 19%. Um, you can have 20%, sometimes more, it depends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're making our way through the Metroid rooms. Um, you can kill them with one super, five missiles, or three power bombs. Um, obviously, the fastest way is to just use super missiles. Oh, well. G mode and R mode. I am not going to talk about G mode and R mode. They're that's way too convoluted. Um, yeah. I think those those tricks and all of that probably require their own like pre-recorded video because they're also very like volatile. If you're mm -hmm. trying to do them on the cart and yeah, that's tricky. Can can you save the animals today? Can we save the animals? Of we course, don't have yes. to save the frames. Okay, great. Yes. Um, so <laughs> that makes this, me very happy. The baby skip. Um, this was kind of a new iteration of it. Let's see if I can actually do it. Um, it's where we uh, skip the baby clockwise instead of counterclockwise. And um, this is also something I can break down if people are interested in um, with the practice ROM after we're done with this. Um, essentially, we escape the area without being grabbed. When you're grabbed by the baby Metroid, there's this whole scene to where it's sad, it recognizes Samus right before she's on the brink mm -hmm. of death with one HP. And um, mm -hmm. then it, uh, it flies off all sad. And then um, obviously later we do see the baby once again um, helping Samus. There is um, the, actually... The baby skip is kind of as easy as like just jumping over it in the circles. Yeah, it's right? like a jump rope type of thing. It is, you have to kind of manipulate the movements and everything, but... Right, um, right. Yeah. Okay, anyway, sorry, keep going. Yeah, that's, that's about it, yeah. Um, you can actually, you can actually take the baby out, but that does soft lock the game. So I'm not going to do that now, and that would just be devastating. So we'll keep the that baby alive, and that does require also a, um, quite a few heavy glitches or the practice ROM. So one mm. thing, um, a lot of people were asking about is the Zeb skip. So this is one trick that you pretty much need to know if you're going to speed run this game. And it okay. is kind of a tricky thing to explain, but the best way that I can explain it is when you come here to do the Zeb skip, you're going to freeze this Rinka. This Rinka appears, or we call it, they're you know, SpaghettiOs, whatever you want to call them. You angle down, you are going to freeze this, and that creates kind of a platform that pushes you into the Zebatite. And what you do with that is you, you will... Um, there's many different methods to actually get on top of the platform here. You can down back, or you can um, okay. take off. Let's just say you have a normal setup here. Um, you are going to freeze this, take damage, push forward. You're going to jump into the Zeb and hold forward. And now oh. what happens is you just get pushed right through. You essentially get pushed on top of that Rinka, mm -hmm. and um, it, 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 it clips you into the Zebatite, and that also unloads all of these. So in the speedrun, this is huge, because in order to destroy these, you need to use a lot of your ammo. Right, and if, so this helps conserve that. Yeah, it not only conserve, but oh. if we had to destroy everything, the, the speedrun would be an extra five minutes long. Probably not five minutes, but it would be much longer because we'd be gra grabbing so many more missile packs, so many more super mm -hmm. packs. Um, so that's essentially just one way that we, you know, save time. So that's really cool. Let's go ahead and take down Mother Brain one. Nice, very nice. And really, really fast. I'm going to show off something that hopefully doesn't crash the game. Once again, I did say this is all on original hardware. It is. Um, so this is called the murder beam. So you'll notice earlier when I did the GT code that um, all of these beams were selected. If you try mm -hmm. to do this in the vanilla game, you can't. It deselects Spazer and Plasma. So whatever you select, it selects the other one, or deselects the other one okay. rather. Um, but what we do is called the like select the VAR beam. And how you do this is you come over 
and this is this is going to crash the game just so you know if you do this because there's very specific <laughs> uh, places that you can only do this in um so you go over to the high jump you're going to press left and um select a for me uh, at the same time and if you do it at the same time you get oh. you get var that's actually taking from the varia suit graphic um but you know it turns on every single beam so now if we release our charge shot what's going to happen is something called the murder beam so hopefully it doesn't crash so what's going to happen now everything looks super normal mother brain is now just taking significant amounts of damage i'm going to go ahead and turn this off or else we're going to crash the game um and it's just going to be a very fast fight um i can't do any attacks just because mother brain is already being damaged um and this should probably it's be done just sitting there taking damage yep so it the way the way it works is it goes directly up from where you laid the the beam the murder beam so you can see i need to kind of assist a little bit here because mother brain's head is not directly above now it is oh now it's back right oh i yes. see so it has to be always in that line because that's still going you just moved back out of range now that she's in range she's still yes. okay so i saw this happening when oats was setting up and i was like waiting to get this explanation so i'm really excited we're just gonna let uh um, here we're just gonna let mother brain damage me down i was considering doing the stand-up glitch um the stand-up glitch with the murder beam active is such a mess. Um, mm -hmm. And you can crash if you don't do it right. You'll just fall right to the floor, and I think there's, like, acid underneath. Um, as you can see, without doing this, it's just a graphical disaster. Um, <laughs> yeah. So what's actually going to happen is um, Mother Brain will start taking damage um, when she sits down, and that will affect the third phase of the fight um, to where Mother Brain will have less HP for the third phase. That's cool. Yeah, so there's there's just weird stuff going on right now in the game. The game's just teetering on crashing, but yeah, clearly but intentionally, yes. Managing somehow, yeah. <laughs> Yes, Ryu. Uh, yep. Baby. The baby. It's here for you. So if we lay a power bomb at any point during this, if we have a stand-up glitch, um, and we the stand-up glitch allows you to move around during this and then um, deal damage to Mother Brain at this phase. Um, if you lay a power bomb, which there's a couple of different ways you can have power bombs at this point, um, the baby will just poof, just a tiny little explosion and just be gone Aww. and nothing happens the game doesn't advance mother brain just stands there stunned like what just that happened that would be the soft lock yeah that would soft lock the game um this is why i didn't want to do stand up glitch because it's it's hardly moving along as you know, as i'm sitting here so <laughs> yeah. yeah takes a little, a little at the moment <laughs> sure have some questions farther up that I see that we can um, get back to once we're done with this. Yes. And um, this isn't the end of what I'm showing, so we will um, we will make it to the end here, and I will go off the planet, but that's not the end of the actual... Uh... We're saving the animals. Well, we're saving the animals, too. But I am going to reset a different file, and I'm going to show you yeah, how we got the right. series in the first place. So. Perfect. Yeah, this is just great and not uh, messy and glitchy at all, yes. Oh, it looks fine. Yeah. I, I would also say that this would be like a motion or not an epilepsy warning, basically. There's a lot yeah, of pretty much, yeah. Here too. So that's the end of the murder beam. It still is active. It's around this position. So if there was anything that could take damage right here, it would just be getting lit up. So it, it never goes away, essentially. That's cool. Okay, so we will oh, yeah, it's feeling like five at save the animals, and uh, once I hit oh. the ship, I will reset. 
Yay! Show off a couple more things. It's happening, chat. It's happening. Very excited. <laughs> I suppose I can do it just this one time, yeah. <laughs> just this one. Um, where else does the murder beam work without crashing? I've never tested it too much, but um, you can use it in quite a few different spots. It's just too messy. Um, okay. It, it, you would never use it in an actual speed run, even if it were allowed, because it slows everything down too much. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, it's very, it's really useful in one way, but yes. yeah, it's slow in others. It's useful for entertainment purposes, pretty much only. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just what we're here for. This is why they give you this much time to get out. I wish I could have known of some cool trick with the with the animals, but I don't think there is one. Someone needs to find some mm -hmm. cool glitch with these guys, but as far as I know, there is no fun stuff with that. I know you can get stuck in the room with them, but that's no fun. Yeah. We're good now. Yes, and they're free and fusion can progress. We did it. And an ending. Okay. Here we go. So I'm going to reset. Perfect. It. It's not over yet. I mean, oh. Because I did say, you know, we started in series with a weird item layout and... Um, right. I know we're, we're all curious to know how that happens. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all, we get to learn, finally, yes. the way that we started the showcase today. We're getting our answers. So there are many different ways to do this, and I think the best way to show this um, is to go back to where we did early super missiles. Um, so we're going to head back down this way. Um, and this this file is just a, a completed file that I did offline. You'll see that I only have 35 missiles. Um, that's there's a reason for that, but it doesn't matter. Um, but it's essentially a, a completed 100% um, file that I had fresh um, on the vanilla card. So mm -hmm. um, we're gonna show off the space time beam is what it's called. So the same way that I did the uh, um, the murder beam, we are going to do essentially the same thing, except we're going to take off wave. Um, what that's going to do is it has a very interesting property. Uh, I don't know if this guy needs to get out of there. Um, so we're going to stand in this position. I am going to do the same thing. Keep ice on. Uh, turn on spacer. Turn that on. And uh, while we sit here, I am going to just shoot. Oh. And uh, there's some weird stuff that happens. You start to fall out of bounds, and there's blocks oh. everywhere in this game that have um, triggers to areas and loading zones. So what that did was that actually triggered the zone or some sort of um, a block or something to push me up the elevator. You can see this is what happens when you do this trick is there's a lot of <laughs> weird stuff on top. It's Engine just chat? ones. Yeah, a lot of ones. So we're going to um, head back up and see what's going on here. Okay, some of them are not highlighted anymore. Okay. So we've already collected every single item in the game with the exception of some missiles. So we're going to mm -hmm. go... Turn that off. Go ahead and turn that off just so we don't crash the game. And um, you can see there's some Whoa. crazy graphical glitches happening. <laughs> it's a little bit difficult to traverse the area, but we'll do our best to get back to the ship. Yeah, so you kind of have to just guess where some of these so platforms weird. are. And... Yeah, it's not quite... Oh, I see. Even there, too. And um... Okay. Look at that. The energy tank has uh, reappeared. That's... It was gone before. Hmm. Now it's now it's completely back. Um, I think it's safe to say that maybe most items are back. But uh, so we come back here, and the planet is now turned off. It's like everything's been reset. Oh right. Very very odd. Okay. Yes. So what we're gonna do is go back to the ship, and we are going to save. 
we're going to reset. And we're just going to load the file back up and uh, see what happens, I suppose. So we now have, like I started with file A, the extra E tank. Um, the reason oh, yeah. we had the extra E tank on file A is because of the E tank on Terminator going back to the ship. So what that did essentially Ooh. was uh, reset the game entirely. So the game, for some reason, with that glitch, um, allows you to start fresh. And um, there's some cool stuff with this too that I'll explain. During these cutscenes, this is actually playable. Samus is a playable character in some of these cutscenes. This cutscene, for example, she's playable. If you could somehow take control, you'll see her turn uh, the gravity color with screw attack. That's not supposed to, that's not, not there generally. But huh. since we restarted the game and we have new items, um, these cutscenes actually also have those items. Um, the, the game right now thinks you have, I think you have 900 missiles on some of these cutscenes. It's like an odd number. There's probably some reason for that. Um, but yeah, now Samus has a speed booster and and um, all the suits and everything. Fortunately, there's just those two cutscenes and there's no actual way to take control of Samus during those, unless you're using the emulator and there are some some sneaky things you can do to take control and actually play during these cutscenes, um, mm -hmm. which is very interesting. They actually, you can keep playing the cutscenes until, for example, you hit Mother Brain's tank five times. Um, and then that triggers the, the next um, uh, storyline here, essentially, or until you see the baby Metroid pop out of the egg. So. Yeah, it's it's quite uh, quite fun to mess around with, but that is um, emulator stuff to where you have to actually change some of the uh, the game itself. Mm -hmm. And so not available in the version that we're on right of, now. Yes, yes, that's sure. you gotta change the game's code essentially. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, and this is back to series station. This is where we started our journey. And I suppose this is a perfect way to also end our journey. So that's how you get back to series station. And that's what I have to show for you. So that's awesome. Okay, cool. While we're still here, by the way, thank you so much for telling us how all of this works, showing us some of the stuff. Wait, wait. Okay. So a couple of quick things before we swap back. Is there anything you'd want to show any other types of um, things that would crash the game that you'd be interested in or something that's kind of volatile that you'd be willing to like give a couple of attempts at. It's okay if not, but I just wanted to, since we have the time, kind of offer the space for that. Um, man, there's, there's quite a, a practice from Brain Buster. Oh no, I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> um, I, th I think some of my chat would have to refresh my brain on some of it because I can't think of anything off the top of my like maybe head. Maybe give us a good crash. Yeah, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll do some. So. Okay. Um, okay, while we're setting that up then, I do have some questions from chat. I'm scrolling up a little bit that I saw that we didn't get answered. So I figured it was a good time to maybe like ask about it. Okay. Um, somebody was asking about a green gate setup. Is it just one step backwards before the jump against the door and shoot up diagonally? Um, if people have questions about that, I can load up the practice ROM, if that's fine. Um, I would yeah, be. okay, let me do that, and then I'll show off the, uh, the final crash that we'll end it with. Okay, cool, great. Let's go, let's go. Okay, while you're working on that, can you still answer a question? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, somebody said, I played, a can I played on console back in 1994. Now I don't own a Super Nintendo anymore. How can I set up to play and do those map randos? Um, rando Super Metroid. You could do that with either emulator or um, so you get the map randos from a, a website called MapRando.com. I know it sounds like a scam. It is not a scam. <laughs> it's not like you're downloading more more you know RAM. I promise. Um, but that's where you essentially set it up, and then um, it it it's really easy step by step. Um, yeah. 
And then I think emulator would probably be the best bet for that. I, I play on my flash card. So this is all original hardware. The only thing that's not original right now is, thank you for linking that, um, is the the flash card right now. And that's how we cool. that's how we use this kind of stuff that's made for they us for um, yeah, for speed running and uh, for basically anything that we want. So. Safe states and practice stuff, it's huge. It's so big in speed runs. Um, somebody also asked, do you like rando or any percent better? Um, so it's just different. Um, it, it comes in waves. Yeah. Let's see here. Um, it, it comes in waves to where I I grinded any percents and I was very motivated and I was, you know, really pushing for, for the time. And I, you know, it's once I kind of get over that, then I'm like, okay, I, I just want to chill and I want to play map yeah. randos or I want to play something else. Um, so it, it just comes in waves. Probably in like another year, I'll go, okay, I really want to speed run 100% and, um, yeah. you know, get back to speed running. It's just a different feel. Um, speed running can For be sure. kind of stressful, which sometimes is not fun, but sometimes it is. Yeah. And again, yeah, I mean, like burnout is real just with any type of content creation or speed running in general. So being able to kind of vary it up, like randomizers are, I think, have been really huge for providing a fresh new take on, or like a lot of speedrunners who stick with like one game or one series. So I think it's really cool. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Looking at more questions as we go down. Yeah. So, but you should go ahead. Okay. So the way I set up Green Gate Glitch, and I'll, pr I'll probably mess it up 60 times now, that's the amount of supers that I have, um, <laughs> is I have Moonwalk, fortunately. So if you don't have Moonwalk, you can kind of, um, you can turn around, inch your way to the right and then turn around back to the gate. Okay. Um, but if you do have Moonwalk, I Moonwalk backwards. And then kind of this position to where I see a line of pixels in between Samus's right knee and the gate. Um, so then what yeah, you do is um, I jump, push forward after jumping and then shoot before I hit the ceiling. And as you can see, it doesn't work. So you reset it back up. Oops, doesn't work. Reset it back up and you kind of just try this so there are there you got it there we go um it, it's kind of trial and error sometimes i'm getting it first try i play a lot of map randos now and it, this is always required in map randomizers so um some days i'm hitting it first try some days i'm not at all so um it's it's very precise but as you can see you kind of just get into that position Moonwalk backwards, get into the position again. And like I said, you're you're jumping, pushing forward and shooting kind of around the time mm -hmm. you hit your head on the ceiling. You know, you can see sometimes it goes bad. Ah, okay. oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if anyone has any other questions while I have the uh, practice ROM up, definitely yeah. feel free. Well, somebody was asking what are the most important tricks for map rando? Um, so a lot of map like rando questions. Kind of yeah. important. Map randos yeah. are very popular right now, I know, so. Mm -hmm. um, probably short charging. Um, probably a lot of the underwater stuff. Uh, pink okay. Bryn Gate. Um, I'm trying to think of what you're talking about, Photon. Take up uh, Green Hill. Um, Somebody also said out of bound in landing. Right? Okay, so there is. Out of bounds um was that the was that the question um because there is well i think that's like a suggestion maybe maybe one of the suggestions that's like something that. that i haven't practiced so in in the landing site there are these blocks and certain blocks are crash blocks and certain blocks are loading zones and certain blocks are okay. just blocks um so the out of bounds stuff is you need to navigate without hitting crash blocks so it's very specific and it it's part of the glitch category that allows you to finish the game in like 11 minutes. Um, but that's that's a wow. whole can of worms that I haven't practiced in years. Okay. Oh, the, the okay. blue gate with the hoppers. Oh, um, you want me to explain that, Photon? Because I can explain that real quick since we're, since I have this open. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely feel free to ask anything since this is fired up. I'd love to explain any trick that people want to uh, figure out for themselves. Can you explain how to do those clips like in WS? Um, yes. Setting, 
Yep. Got it. Okay. Um, okay, so let me... Ooh, are there any non-insane newer... Are there newer task strategies that are actually in consideration for possible run implementation? Ooh, um... A lot of the movement is being optimized, not close to task, because you know how we talked about arm pumping moving you forward a pixel? TAS arm mm -hmm. pumps every single frame, which is just so much faster than any human could ever get close to. Yeah. So it's a different kind of uh, different kind of game for TAS. So, um, okay, so this gate, um, this is a very common one in map randos. So, um, and Photon was asking how you set this up. So there's a couple different ways. Generally, let's pretend that, um, let's say I have no beams. And um, I'll keep high jump on, but I'll also turn it off afterwards. Um, you can't actually hit this, but in a lot of cases, you need to be able to either escape an area um, to get back, or there's maybe an item over there that you're going to need. So let's pretend that you have high jump. What you do is you moon walk backwards to this, and you see this spot on the door. And this is about where I shoot angle up super. So you get into that position, you jump, and you hear that? The gate opened up. So if we go take a look, oh. there you go. So that's essentially the same as what we did earlier, but this opens this gate, which is, is very important for map randoms if people um, are asking about that. So it's very simple to do. You just shoot around this position and uh, yeah. Uh, if you that's really cool. Let's say that you don't have a high jump, and uh, you have to you have to do this a different way then, because this won't work. So what you do is you moonwalk, you jump to the door, you press down and turn left. So that puts you in that position, um, like one pixel on the ledge. So you're gonna jump, press right, and shoot at the same position that we did with high jump. And you see how oh, yeah. you heard the noise, and uh, there you go, the gate is open once again. So, Dang. yes. That seems like, I mean, the timing on that, though, will have to be. Yeah, it's um, it's one of the easier <laughs> things to do. You could, you could probably fire it up if you're a casual player, and as long as you kind of know what you're doing, you could probably do it. Cool. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. There you go. Um, How do you do gravity suitless key booster? Um, on, is there... Is that what the question? Um, I'm trying to think. So yeah. that might not be able to be shown because in map okay. randos, rooms connect in non-traditional ways. So gotcha. in this, I don't, is there any water room that connects to a non-water room? So that's a little bit difficult to explain, but essentially I'll do my best without even showing. So... Um, okay. How it works is, as I think as long as you, let's pretend that this room is a water room, as long as you can run in and you see the one frame, you know how we talked about there's a frame to where Samus's back foot will touch? Um, as long as that's held down before you enter the water room, if you have enough runway, you will end up getting a shine spark underwater. Now, that's cool. Dragon room, uh, no, that's water into. That's that's water mm. into water. Um, if you're close to the door, um, what you do, let's say you're this distance, you're gonna push forward while holding run. You're gonna let go of forward, and then you're going to press forward again right here. So you would push forward. Let go, push forward again right before the door. So it looks something like that. And then that would set you up to where you get shorts, um, basically a short charge or a shine spark in a much shorter distance. Sorry, I don't have any actual way to show it right now. Um, but I think there are tools that are being developed and some people have to where you can you can set up any room order that you want for like map randos. But That's cool. That's really cool that they're working on that. Um, you had a question, let's see. Are there any places with potential time saves or at this moment, is it still is it skill and luck dependent? So I guess like, are there any other types of time saves like in the market for runs? Um, there. So 
we do things called theory, uh, theory tasks. And what those mean, it's not a traditional task, but it's a, it's a task that we do with our own gameplay. And then we splice everything together to kind of get a, a general idea of what might be possible. Um, okay. So the world record right now is a 40-36. Um, one of my theory tasks that wasn't completely optimized was a 39-30. Um, okay. So that's in, in a sub-40 is unthinkable. Like it's almost impossible to even think of that happening in the next five to 10 years in this game. So if, you know, then it's like, how is there that much of a discrepancy? However, there have been other theory tasks from other runners that are 38s. So it's all human oh. play that's optimized. So it's it's theoretically possible, but in order for that to happen, it, it would almost, you'd be a, just a cheater. Like no one would believe it. It's, it's so far out of the realm of possibility. But for example, that's why we love this game is there is that much room. And even in our theory tasks, there's 30 seconds here and there, and we can still improve on the 38. So, yeah. Wow. Ooh, okay, that's a lot. Somebody asked about grapple tech in water. Um, I'm trying to think of any instance that. Could that, use that yeah. Even? Um. So. <laughs> is um whoever asked that? Let me. Oh, I guess yeah. There's a couple of things I could show with that. Let me let me get the proper setup here. Um, and let's get up to this. Well, this this will work just fine too. Um, yeah. So grapple jumps are the main thing. So, hey, where'd he go? They're gone. Hey, <laughs> hold on. Let me. Let me turn this back on and reload the room. Sometimes the practice ROM can be a little weird. There's supposed to be balloons like, there that you can jump, um, that you can grapple oh. onto, but the balloons are gone, unfortunately. All right. So there is a technique called grapple jumping. So this is extremely, extremely useful. And um, almost mandatory, I feel like, in some cases. So I don't have gravity suit right now, so... You have the very sluggish underwater movements. Um, so one thing you can do is after I let go and I get some momentum, I'm going to turn into a morph ball. Then I'm going to on morph and press jump. Then I'm going to repeat that process over and over and over. So it'll look oh something boy. like this. So you Whoa. can just keep doing that. Let me turn off high jump and it's, it's a little more exaggerated then. Um, okay. So you can basically just, oh. you know, fly wherever you want underwater. And this <laughs> this is cool. extremely useful for um, for uh, the, the randos and almost mandatory for, in a lot of cases. You can actually get around. Yes. Yeah, so grapple tech is, grapple is kind of difficult to use, but... Um, it doesn't work just underwater. You can use it anywhere. That's cool. Is it harder when you're not underwater because you're do that faster, yeah. or does it not matter? It, it is a little bit more tricky. Um, so okay. let me put gravity back on. So this is essentially I'm not underwater now. Um, oh sure. So you have to do it a lot quicker. So let me see if I can actually get some sort of. So it's easier with high jump, but. But you basically have to just spam it. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you can still do it. Okay. But yeah, tricky. Just more tricky. Yeah. There you go. Okay, sweet. Ooh. Yeah, any other questions? That's so cool. What about those tricky wall jumps when you're surfacing from underwater? Um, Tricky wall jumps when you're surfacing. Uh, I'm just reading the question. I wish I could give you context. Um. Are you talking about underwater wall jumps? Or, I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Spring ball jump? Yeah, I can talk about spring ball jumps. Yes, so... Um, spring ball jumping is often necessary 
in um, in randos as well. So uh, let me turn on. Let me turn this on. High jump. So spring ball jumping is when you have spring ball. It's turned off. You jump morph before the sc uh, the screen fades out. Um, you you need to be in a morph ball. So I'll just do a single. So Samus is in morph ball. I'm gonna go ahead and turn spring ball back on. It has to be off when you start. And then I'm going to press jump before I hit the peak of my height. So then, as you can see, I I just get that much extra. I'm essentially just jumping. Mm. Um, there's probably a better way to show this that's a little more clear with a background. Um, so I'll show that real quick. And then wrecked ship clips. Sure. Then I'll I'll do that. Because uh, yeah, those are very important as well. Um, I love it. Thank you for your input, chat. We're finding a lot more stuff. Trying to think of an instance that we would use the spring ball jumps in an actual rando. So let me do it right here. Okay. So uh, this as well. So um, you could wall jump up this. So you could just spam jump and you can get up there. But now I can't get up here. This is something I cannot do. So this is what spring ball jump is useful for. So I don't have spring ball on right now. I'm I morphed. You got to make sure that you see Samus morph. And I'm going to turn spring ball on, and it puts me up there. Oh. So you got to you you essentially get an extra spring ball jump height. Um, cool. Yeah. So you can use that to your advantage to get up to uh, places that you normally can't reach. So. Mm -hmm. um, and that's mostly just useful in rando. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Some speed runs, but um, kind of arbitrary ones. Gotcha. Okay. How do you do multiple spring ball jumps? I can get back to that if uh, if people want to learn about that as well. That the double spring ball jump is pretty tricky, and it's not necessarily ever used and in the um, difficulties that we use for map randos for like the, sure. the races and the tournaments and stuff going on. But um, I could still show it if people are interested. So um, <clears throat> this is one clip that every speedrunner does and you're going to see it in pretty much every single run um, is this one right here. So these are just normal blocks. There's nothing special about them. Um, like I said earlier with the hitboxes, let me show you the hitbox viewer uh, since we have this open right now. Oh, right. Um, okay. Sprite features, um, Samus hitbox. So these are the different hitboxes, different sizes. Um, you can see aiming down is the smallest other than morph. So it's morph, aiming down, oh, yeah, spin, um, st and then standing still. So spin is quite small. So what we do is we spin into this gap and then we press L to expand the hitbox. It's kind of hard to see. But um, you can see it just gets larger. So mm -hmm. we will spin and then we expand. Um, let me see if I can actually do it properly. There we go. Um, it's kind of weird if I'm not doing it quickly. It's one of those things you don't, it's like a password, you know? Um, yeah. So this actually, I guess what it does is it pushes you downwards. I guess I've never looked at the hitbox viewer. Um, but essentially, I'm not where I'm supposed to be and you just press jump. So what you do is you spin into it and you press L a little bit before you would be landing. So you want to press L essentially right when you enter the gap. And then that will, you know, essentially, you know, put you in that position. Pass you through. Um, yeah. So I might've misspoke earlier. I think it has to do with, yeah, the crouch. So the, the, not the standing animation that's larger, the crouch animation is larger than the spin. And that's what, um, that's what's clipping you into the block, so. Mm -hmm. um, nice. Yeah, this last one, um, we kind of answered earlier, or, or it was kind of answered earlier, but it's like the most essential trick to practice for a beginner wanting to start speedruns. 
Um, yeah, pretty much uh, wall jumping is good to get used to. Um, if you have the practice ROM, you can actually, you can see and visualize the hitboxes. So that's how we use ledge grabs. So um, when you're spinning, you have that size hitbox, if you can see. Um, and then when you press L, see how it expands. So that's how we use mm -hmm. ledge grabs. Um, that's how we speed across rooms like this. Let me, let me show you. Um, I believe this should be fine. Um, so that's how we do quick rooms like this. And, you, you know, it's very smooth. You can see the hitbox constantly changing. Uh, yeah. If you're, if you're, you have a keen eye. For like a moment. Yeah, you can see it expanding and then shrinking and expanding and shrinking. Um, so fast. So that's, yeah. that's, that's how we utilize. And you're doing a few boxes. wall jumps off there too. Yep. Yep. Wall jumps down. So I'm aiming down here, which shortens the hitbox as small as it can be other than morph. And then that puts mm -hmm. me on this ledge a little bit quicker, spinning and then expanding, spinning, expanding. Um, right. Stuff like that. That's that's kind of the movement of this game. And if you understand the hitboxes, I think that that really helps understand um, the movement of the game. Yeah. So having the visualizer is a cool, again, good tools, always useful. Yes. Well, else he can show a uh, short charge a little more now if he wants with the practice ROM indicator. Yes. Let me do that. Let's get through that, and if we have any like last-minute thoughts or like any other specific things we can, otherwise um, we can get to the crash and then you can uh, go to bed. Perfect. I'm ready <laughs> for it. My pups are already sleeping, sound asleep, so oh. I gotta join them soon. Um, Babies. Let's see here. Uh, what was I doing? It was. Little yes. flash clip. Um, I will do. So there's something called magic pants. And this is how we practice, or if you're <laughs> learning uh, short charges uh, and how that works, this is an extremely useful tool. So if you listen, you'll be able to hear a click and a beep. And if you watch, you'll be able to see a, um, a flash. And that's the, that's the way that we practice. Or if you're new, like I said, that's the way you can learn. Um, so let's go over here. I'm gonna go ahead and actually turn off the hitbox viewer. It's very distracting for me anyways. Um, so the way this works is you see the flash and you see you hear the click. Um, it's when <clears throat> you can mm -hmm. see when it flashes, Samus's back foot is at its peak. So right now it's her, her right foot. Um, once you kind of get more used to the visuals of Super Metroid, you can actually just watch the animation to see, because some cases it's a little bit tricky and you have to rely on the visual and sometimes you just rely on muscle memory or visual cues. But visual cues um, aren't always useful because sometimes there's a little bit more lag in a room or sometimes mm. the setup that you did was not accurate and you have to quickly adjust. So um, what you do and how this works is every time it's flashing, that's when the game checks to see if you're holding down run. So we utilize that and we just press run on those frames, um, like I explained earlier. So if I were to just hold down run without utilizing the exploit, we get Shine Sparker about right here, which is the, the third um, light on the ground about right here. So okay. if we then even use one tap, if we just press it once, we get it an entire section light Whoa. before. Just That's just one time. If I don't press run and I press run on the first. So that's how useful this is. Now, if, I, you, if you do it twice, you're getting it right here. If you do it three even times- you're not actually going that fast. Yeah, if you do it three times, you get it just a little bit sooner. There's diminishing returns. If you do it four times, which is the max, you can get it around right here. Now, this isn't short enough in some cases. You can try to be more frame perfect with your taps, which is very difficult. Or you can, you can use a stutter. So you push the D-pad forward, let go and repress. And normally we're getting our first tap right here. If I stutter, we're getting it right here. So about right here, as opposed to right here. 
you can even do crazy things like four stutters. So you press for a certain number of frames. It can't be just one frame or else you just do this. So you have to press, let go, press, let go, press, let go, press, let go. Or minus one or plus one, doesn't matter. You have to do that a lot. And then you can get it that soon. So right oh. here, as opposed to right there, as opposed to right there. So you can get a short charge in this very, very small distance. Dang. Uh, yes. Wild. And not a large space. Okay. You can actually get a short charge. I will show just real fast, um, which I have done just once because it took me an hour to do, and I, I don't know why I did this. You can actually get a short charge in this room. So this is how short that humans can do it. You can even do oh, it wow. a little bit like like right there. So this oh, is wow. from that this was about five frames from from frame perfect, but um yeah, you can you can do it in a very, very short distance. And like um Ryu was saying, you can also do it on the ship. Um gotcha. which I'll, I'll do for fun real quick. And then was there any other questions I was showing or trying to Um Kago or Kago? How do you say that? Kago. Kago? Ego question mark, crystal flash clip. Um, underwater wall jumps, we kind of saw. Underwater already. wall jumps is, is um, a little bit crazy to explain, and I don't think any yeah. casual player would do it, but I can explain it. I, I don't want to gatekeep nothing difficult, you know, that's the whole point of this, so. Yeah, that's fair. Um, Look at that. <laughs> um, sorry, uh, uh, talk about this one more time and I'll try to show one. Um, it was underwater wall jump. Kego and crystal Yes, flash. so I will do the um, Kego. I'll explain that. Okay. Um, what's the best area to explain? Um, let's go over here. We did the shrimp. I thought we did the shrimp thing. Uh, oh, no, uh, or Dragon. shrimps. Oh, we did, yeah. Yeah, we did that. We did that. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. Kago. How it works is these, funny enough, are actually Kagos. These are called Kagos. Oh. Um, the way it works is you, you know how we talked about um, soft morphine for mock balls? And you can't bounce. So, let's say we try uh -huh. to do it as close to the ground as possible because you can you can soft morph from higher than um than you i guess as long as it's within one tile the higher you do it that's more optimal and that's kind of what speedrunners will try to do we'll try to soft morph from as high as possible without bouncing or you can soft morph as low as possible um so let's do it as low as possible and see what happens well oh. we're right through it so we're we're in the the kago. Flashing it doesn't hurt. Yep. So um, you can utilize this in many different ways. Um, I guess one way is um, just off the top huh. of my head that I can think of is this um, the Cora room. So this is one strat that we do. Um, see this enemy coming up on the ground. We will kago through that and then mock ball through it at the same time. So two tricks in one. And this is actually faster than some of the other traditional strats through here with, with killing them. Uh, so, so it allowed you to go through like several enemies. Yeah, so we go through the enemy um, and huh. mock ball at the same time, essentially. That's cool. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> it's stuff like this that nice. you can use. Um, and that's, Kago is extremely useful. So. Yeah, very small things, though. Oh, they're talking about the grapple kill on Dragon, not the microwave. Oh, grapple kill. <clears throat> um, and then, again, crystal flash, if that's the thing you want to do. Yeah, so, uh, like, how <laughs> to crystal flash? Just this crystal flash clip. Oh, crystal flash clip. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. There's a... Oh, that's that's a little bit tough. I'm not gonna show that, Lorps. Sorry. We're not gonna do that one. Yeah, get out of here with that question. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a little little odd. And then the other one was um, grapple beam for Dragon. 
for like the, the grapple kill. Okay, let me show, I think people asked about the, there is one instance to where we do um, the Kagos, and um, this is kind of one of the more important parts, so I'll just show this real quick. Yeah. Almost put oats on the spot. There, yeah, that's a that's crazy. <laughs> it's like a frame perfect, crazy, no visual cue trick. They're just put. Oh, this wow. just my okay. chat putting me on the spot. Yeah. Sure. Um. So this is where this is most useful. The kegos or one of the spots. Um. We we do the same thing how I explained earlier to where you you try to soft morph, um, closer to the ground essentially. Oh, just going right through it. Yes. Oh, that's nice. So instead of yeah. waiting forever in the speed run, uh, we will do this. So, um... You're purposely taking the damage on the side to help you? Yes, so if I didn't take that damage, these deal a lot of damage. Um, what do they do, 50? Oh, 50? I see. Yeah, so they do 50 damage. Yeah. These spikes only do 15 damage. So, one thing that we come up with is we, we hit the spikes intentionally to use the iframes and then Kago without damaging on these because this With, would just kill yeah. us in, in the actual speed run. Saves you 70 HP. Yes, so it's it's significant. Wild. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we've made that joke a number of times, Chad. <laughs> yeah. No brain buster today. <laughs> All right. Uh, grapple kill. Show that. Dragon grapple kill, yeah. Let's do that one, and then let's do the crash, and then we will, and then we'll get ready to head out. Okay. Cool. <gasps> Yay! This has been so fun. Love it. I understand so much more now. Yeah, it's 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 definitely fun explaining the uh, the nuances. Um, there's so much detail to explain yeah. and talk about. So. As exactly. long as people and are like, really interested in it, it is, it is fun to, you know, explain. Right, because, like, when else are you going to be able to see it? If you're watching just, like, you know, run practice or, like, you're watching a GDQ and, like, it's actually happening, like, there just isn't time, you know, where you don't think about explaining certain things. So having a platform to actually just do that is always fun. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. So, Dragon, um, you can actually kill Dragon with um, grappling these things. So, oh. um, I didn't get it there, but um, there's two different ways you can do it on the right, left, um, or you can wait for Dragon to um, kind of swing back and forth. Um, but one way that we do it in the randomizers is, um, will you give me a good pattern? I could change the RNG and, and cheat once again, but I'm waiting. These are 50-50s, so. Um, one thing that we do is we come over here, we intentionally get grabbed by Goop, I'm gonna save state. We jump and we just angle up and grab oh. them. So this will fry the shrimp. No microwave. Whoa. Needed. You have to grapple onto the side of the wall or one of those destroyed. Mm -hmm. Yep, one like, of the destroyed things. The turrets. Yep. Turrets. Yeah, I was like cannon turrets. Okay. Because you'll you'll just essentially just take damage. But um, since Dragon is connected, um, since you're connected to Dragon or holding on to you. You know, basically just will also take damage. Oh, that's so cool. That's really cool. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of little things like that that are fun. So, all right. That's really, really neat. I love that. All right, let's crash the game. All right. Wrapping it up. <laughs> this back in. Yeah, and, um, you know, if... I, I do love explaining tricks and glitches and as long as I, I can. Uh, so if anyone has any questions as well, I'm always always available if I'm streaming to, to answer any question too. Okay, great. I'm going to hold you to that just so you know. As long as it's not, you know, crazy, crazy. Then. I'm not going to ask you about the, what's the one everybody keeps saying? BT Raid skip Buster? or Brain, I, Brain Buster. I, I, I won't ask you about that. <laughs> that was, um, yeah, that was embarrassing. Let's just say that. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> I thought I found some some game breaking glitch, and it turns out the practice ROM had a hotkey 
that I didn't know was active. Oh. And uh, I I was activating the hotkey to um, essentially destroy uh, platforms. So I was doing this thing to get behind Mother Brain. And I was like, wow, how is this happening? Turns out I was hitting the combination of buttons that just gets rid of all the enemies and allows you to just pass them. Oh no. It was, I, we were talking to Tassers. I was, we were DMing people on Discord. It was a whole f feeding frenzy of a new glitch. And it turns out that, yeah, it was just me, just, just me being me. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, a legendary moment. All right, so... I see they really do not let you live it down. No, of course not. We have an emote. <laughs> of course not. Yeah, for it, so... Um, so, just like we activated the space-time glitch earlier, we're going to do it again. Same spot, right? So there shouldn't be any issues. However, let's pretend that we just uh, misplaced a little bit. Let's just say we, we stood a, f a little bit further back and see what happens taking some damage. That's no good, right? Um, oh, let's oh. let's see if this hopefully works. Come on, Samus. Just keep going. Just keep going this way. Come on. You can do it. Keep on going. Keep on going. We're almost there. We're almost there. Oh, something is happening yeah, right something now. Something is happening. Just gotta let it... Gotta let it happen. We should be hitting... Some sort of transition here. There we go. Oh. And just like before, you're, you're probably thinking, oh, this is just what we did to reset the game. But unfortunately, we hit the wrong block. And uh, now we just go on an infinite, infinite loop up and down the elevator. <laughs> it's just this yes. for the rest of time. This is for the rest of time. Nothing we can do. And you did not successfully reset the game to go back to the series station. So... Yes. Just like a kid on an elevator who hits all the buttons for every floor. Yep, for gets... eternity. This is <laughs> the reward. Yeah. I love that. All right, well, that's, uh, oh, yeah, that's man. what I got the show for you, so. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Oath. This was fantastic. Yay! I'm so glad that we learned so much. Thank you, chat, as well, to, like, helping to ask questions and, and offer some extra things for um, Oats to show off. This is super, super cool. Um, I've had an absolute blast, of course. I love learning more about Metroid. Um, I've been getting super into it. So thank you again, Oats. Now, please, it's time. Plug yourself. Tell us where we can find you, what you're working on, maybe things coming up for you or things you're interested in. Like, just go for it. Yeah, so um, you can find me on twitch.tv slash Oats and Goats. Um, I mainly speedrun Super Metroid, but um, I've been kind of taking a break from that and playing like the map randos which there's tournaments mm -hmm. going on and people are loving that and so we're we're playing a ton of those and um they're, they're always a blast it's just you know it's it's competitive and a lot of people are becoming interested in them and yeah so that's a lot of fun and um i try to play some casual games from time to time and uh okay. you know mix it up a little bit but yeah that's that's mainly what i do so you can find me there and um, I hope to see you. And if if you have any questions about the game or the speed run or anything at, at all, um, I love to explain it. And um, I'd love to have you join the community as well. So, yeah. Awesome. And can I ask what you're playing casually right now on the side? Um, trying to finish Axiom Verge. Um, I oh, love cool. Noida. Okay. I've been playing that. One of my chatters got me into that. And that's that's quite an addictive game. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a lot of fun. Um, cool. Yeah, that's about it. Awesome. Well, please, if for some reason you're not already following Oats and Goats, like, this is the time. Like, make sure to go do this. Um, again, you can go ask him questions. He has offered. The doors are open. Go ask him more stuff about the game, like how things work. See, you know, maybe he, I'm sure he could, like, reference some videos for more specific things. Or, you know, maybe you have days where you're like, I want to try the volatile stuff or just whatever. Um, but yeah, go follow Oats. Thank you so much again for being in the show. You are great, and I've really appreciated this. This is really, really fun. Yes, thank you for having me. For yeah. our, yeah, of course, of course. Um, and for our, you know, our sign off things here. Don't forget about our uh, Flame Fatales coming up. You know, of course, I'm really, really excited about that. Of course, our All Women in Femme speedrunning event, again, starts on Sunday. Sunday. You can watch speedruns from like 1 p.m. to basically 1 a.m. It's like essentially 12 hours a day. Um, super, super cool. Really excited to be involved. I'll be doing, you know, silly 
um, interview prize shenanigans all week as well. Um, so I can't wait for all of that. Uh, also, if you have more questions for um, us who like run these shows or want to be more involved in GDQ Hotfix stuff, you can join our Discord. Uh, there's a Hotfix role you can add, which is really cool. Or if you've missed any of our shows and you want to see them, like if you're like, oh, I, I joined this late and I want to go back and see the beginning of this like show um, with Super Metroid stuff, you can. Like you can just go on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash gamesunquick and check out our VODs on there, which is great. So this will be up on there. Um, and thank you for all the support uh, with your subs and Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, bits, all of that. It helps support us here in Hotfix, which is awesome. So we appreciate you all. Thank you for being here. Thank you again, Oats. This has been Out of Bounds. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your night and we will see you next time. Bye, everyone.